presents Hollywood. Lisa Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Loretta Young and Hugh Marlowe in Come to the Stable. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is the season of the year that brings new life, new hope, and a rebirth of faith. Spring is in the air. Ladies are shopping for Easter bonnets. And there is a joy, well, in just being alive. In the spirit of this season, we want to bring you a beautiful story that will bear many retellings. It's 20th Century Foxes Come to the Stable. And repeating her inspiring performance in this modern drama of unwavering faith, his lovely Loretta Young, and recreating his original role, the talented actor, Hugh Marlowe. And now, before our curtain goes up, I want you to hear of an important discovery about Lux Toilet Soap that is wonderful news for your complexion. Tonight, I want to make you a promise. A promise you can improve your complexion, make it smoother, firmer, fresher, clearer, with daily Lux Soap Care. And here's the discovery that proves this promise. Lux Soap Care has skin tonic action. Remember that phrase, skin tonic action. It means that Lux Care stimulates your inner skin. Now, you've probably always thought of your skin from the outside. Tonight, think of your skin from the inside, because real improvement begins on the inside. Scientific tests show the more you stimulate your inner skin, the lovelier your outer skin looks. And that's just what Lux Skin Tonic Action Care does for you, for any normal skin. It means your complexion will look smoother, firmer, clearer, even younger. You can easily prove this for yourself. Try Lux. Start your daily Lux Care tomorrow. You'll see that with Skin Tonic Action, just one cake of Lux can make your complexion definitely smoother, definitely fresher. Now, here's Come to the Stable, starring Loretta Young as Sister Margaret and Hugh Marlowe as Bob Mason. It's a late winter afternoon, the New England countryside. Against the whiteness of the snow are two small figures who pause now at a crossroad. The road thank you to my brother. What did it see? Jordan, Galilee. Nazareth, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Oh, God is good. Oh, yes. And look, sister, the stable. That must be it over there. The stable. Oh, at last. I think we reached our journey then. Why, why, you are, man. How perfectly charming. Oh, do come in. Thank you. And how do you do? You are Miss Amelia Potts, who paints the beautiful religious pictures? I thank you. Yes, I am. Well, uh, this is Sister Scholastica, and I'm Sister Margaret. Uh, are you sure we're not intruding? Oh, dear, no. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. But, but how did you get here? Oh, we walked. You walked? Mm. All the way from the station in this snow? We sent it more fitting for our pilgrimage. Pilgrimage? Yes. To the stable. Oh, uh, I see. Um, tell me, sister, you're from some order in the city? Uh, no, no, we're from France. We're the order of Holy Endeavor. Our ship came into the Arbor of Dawn. We were on deck to see the Statue of Liberty. From France? Yes. But you, you didn't sound French at all. Oh, no, no, I was born in Chicago. But I went to school in France and took my vows there. And now you're going back to Chicago for the visit. How not? Oh, no, 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 no. We come here to build a hospital. Yes? In Bethlehem? Yes. Yes, you see, during the war, Sister and I worked in the children's hospital. It uh, stood on a hilltop and in the path of an advancing American armored division. The Nazis were using it for an observation post and... Well, it was inevitable that the hospital would have to become a target. I see. So I I made a promise to God that if he would help me get through to the American general and the hospital would be spared, 
that I would one day come back to my own country and build just such a hospital for her sick children. Goodness! Did you get through? Oh, yes. Yes, we got through. Three days later, when the attack was over, the hospital still stood. So you see, Miss Potts, God kept his end of the bargain, and now I'm going to try to keep mine. And Sister Scholastica has promised to help me. But what made you select our little community for your hospital? Well, you know, that was the hand of Providence. We have a postcard with a reproduction of your painting, Come to the Stable. And on the back of it, it told all about Miss Amelia Potts, the lady who lived in Bethlehem and who painted religious pictures. Oh, I'm very flattered that someone sent it to you. And the bishop, he's working with you, of course. Well, we haven't seen the bishop yet. But uh, Sister and I intend to call upon him tomorrow at Sands Point. Then, uh... You will stay to supper. Oh, thank you. And then I think there's a train you can... Oh, yes, 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 there is. It leaves the sand point tomorrow morning at 8.15. Tomorrow morning? Oh, dear Miss Potts. Don't let us inconvenience you. We can sleep anywhere. But I, I only have a tiny spare room. It's really... Oh, but that would be nicely. Oh. Just a margarine. Yes? For that dinner. Oh, this is nice. No? Oh. What a lovely painting. Oh, is it? Just a feel near here. Oh? It's a matter of fact, just across the way. Just across the way. Oh, sister. Are you going to what? No. In the morning, sister, when it's light. Ah, oh, yes. When it is light. Going? But, but where? Oh, to that hill, Miss Potts. To that beautiful hill. <laughs> It is indeed a beautiful hill. And this is the very spot, sister. We'll bury it here. Yes, sister. Here in the snow, the medal of saint -Vie. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear St. Jude, patron of the impossible, here on this lovely hilltop, with the help of our Lord and his dear servant, we will build your hospital. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Arson! Arson! Come back here, Arson! Get down, boy! Get down! Get down, Arson! He's all right. He's all right. Let me see, let me see. I'm terribly sorry. It's all right, Arson. All right, boy. Now, down, down, down. Now, take it easy. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. Thank you very much. He's, uh... Great Dane, isn't he? Yes, but he's, he's just a puppy. Oh, I see. <laughs> Why do you call him Arson? It's a criminal name for such a lovely well, dog. You see, he was raised in the firehouse here in Bethlehem. Oh. oh he's still something of a fire dog. Uh -huh. You should see him when he hears a bell clanging. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, my name's Mason, Bob Mason. Are you, uh, visiting here? Oh, at the moment, yes, the guest of this pot. Oh, Amelia, mm -hmm. how nice. I'm her landlord. Uh, she rents the stable from me. Oh, uh, then you must own this property, Mr. Mason. Uh, this, this hill, I mean. Oh, no, that's my place over there, beyond that orchard. Oh, what a pity. Yes, it is a shame. Why, uh, yes, I suppose it is, but, uh, well, I don't want to sound like a game warden, but why, is it, why are two ladies of your gentle persuasion admiring the scenery at five o'clock in the morning? Oh, we always get up early, Mr. Mason. It's our custom. Well, it's bedtime for me. I do some of my best work after midnight. Oh? I write music, popular stuff mostly, jive, jazz, swing, that sort of thing. Ah, there's that spot. <laughs> yeah, that's right, sister. Uh, you know, Mr. Mason, I, I, I've always thought that music of that type so, well, so tense and nervous would be written in, well, big cities. Well, most of it is, I guess, but I like peace and quiet, uh, so I live out here. My educated friends tell me it has something to do with the uh, man's feeling of insecurity. Oh, Mr. Mason, God's the only answer to man's insecurity. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. Uh, tell me, who does own this hill, do you know? Why, uh, a man by the name of Luigi Rossi. Oh, do you know him? No, sister, I should say I don't. Oh. Well, I don't suppose I'll be seeing you again, but the best of luck. Come on, Arson. Uh, thank you very much. Good night. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Uh, Louisie Rossi, he said. Oh, but first, sister, we must see the bishop. Oh, yes, of course. And let us hope he can see us today, sister. So you have come.
come all the way from France to build a hospital. That's uh, quite a project, sisters. Oh, I know it seems so, Your Excellency, but uh, we are prepared to go about our task in a most business-like way. Uh, and we're glad to know that we have cut down our essentials to only two items. Well, that sounds very practical. What are the two items? Land and money. <laughs> oh, just land and money. Yes, yes. And we've already seen the land, Your Excellency. It, it belongs to Mr. Luigi Rossi. Uh, Sister and I are sincere in our belief that Mr. Rossi might donate the land to us. Luigi Rossi. The name is familiar. But um, even if you get the land, uh, what about financial support? What have you got? We have the intercession of Sarajid. Yes, but what have you got? Well, nothing yet, Your Excellency, but uh, we don't just arrive. Well, your courage is beyond criticism, sisters, but uh, I can be of no financial help to you at all. It's heartbreaking to have to say this, but I, I just can't give you my approval. Even if we could get Monsieur Rossi to donate the land? Please, Your Excellency, if you will give us a little time just to try. Well, if I were to grant you a month, have you money for living expenses? Oh, clearly. Fourteen dollars. <laughs> and as I told you before, we're staying with Miss Potts. And our needs are very simple. Uh, still, Miss Potts may welcome a few extra groceries. I think the diocese can help to the extent of, say, uh, fifty dollars. Oh, thank you, Your Excellency. And now, just as soon as we can, we'll see Mr. Rossi. Luigi Rossi? No, I remember. Sisters, this man, Rossi, why, he is... Yes, Your Excellency? Uh, nothing. I, I wish you success, sisters, and God bless you. Somebody's eating here. Oh, no. You got far to go? Oh, uh, no. Just in the top place. In the table. Mm, that's quite a hike through the snow. Gee, wait a second. Hey, Anthony. Yes, sir. Hey, can you give two ladies a lift? Yes, sir. You don't mind riding on top of this long? Hey, yeah, uh, sister. He works for Mr. Mason. Get right in, ladies. Oh, pardon me. I mean, sister. Sister, look. A jeep. Yes, ma'am, and I've got quite a load here. Yes, yes, I see you have. You know what? Uh, perhaps you'd better sit on the back, Anthony, and sort of uh, hold the boxes secure, and then uh, sister can ride up in front with me. But, but who's going to drive? Oh, I will. Hmm? Who during the world did you ask us to my guys all about the jeep? Say yes. Uh, are you all right? Uh, yes, ma'am, I, I think so. Good. Then let's go. <laughs> Uh, would you mind telling me what sort of sisters you are? Why, certainly. We're the Order of Holy Endeavor. Our motto is Labora et Ora. And that means we work and we pray. We're the pray, huh? I'm sure you do, sister. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Permission to stay, isn't that nice? Yes, Miss Potts, we can stay a month. Uh, are you going to stay here? Oh, dear Miss Potts, we hoped you would invite us. Oh, yes, you're very welcome, of course. Oh, thank you. And now our next step is to see Mr. Rossi about the land. The bishop must have given you our limited support. He gave us fifty dollars. Fifty? Yes. And we're going to share it with you. And with the help of our Lord, uh, perhaps Mr. Rossi will donate the property to us. Donate? The Weasel Rossi? Yes. Uh, do you know where he lives, Miss Potts? In New York, somewhere. New York? Well, then we'll have to ask Mr. Mason to loan us his jeep. Ah, yes. We will ask him very early in the morning, before he goes to sleep. You see, Miss Potts, with the help of fine people like you, we will have our hospital yet. <laughs> For the 
love it. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Who is it? Oh, good morning, Mr. Mason. Oh, it's you. Oh, you were asleep. We awakened you? Yes. But it isn't six o'clock yet. We thought we caught you when you finished your work and were relaxing. I was relaxing, all right. Well, uh, what can I do for you? Oh, we're so sorry. We understood you to say that you worked all night. Well, I do usually, but I... Mr. Mason? Yes? May we buy your jeep for the day? Why, yes. Yes, I suppose so. It's in the garage. Oh, I'll get it for you, but I'm not dressed. Oh, no, I... no, thank you, Mr. Mason. We can manage. Our Lord will bless you, monsieur. Glad to help you out. Good night, sister. Uh, good morning. Yes? It's the key, Mr. Mason, the key to the key. Oh, yes, the key. Uh, yeah, well, Anthony went into town last night. Well, I'll see if I can find it for you. Uh, oh, you'd better come in. Oh, no, thank you. We'll wait here. Oh, okay. He's a very obliging young man, isn't he, sister? Oh, yes. Perhaps you would like to make a donation? <laughs> oh, sister... Well, this is not the propitious time. No? No. Oh. Well, I found it. Here's oh, the key. Thank you very much. And we're terribly sorry to have gotten you out of bed again. Oh, well, that's quite all right. Now, you're sure there's nothing else? No, nothing else. Thank you. And if you need any gas, fill up in the village. You can charge it to me. Oh, thank you. It's a game, They've invented a new game just to keep me from getting my sleep. Good morning, sisters. What can I do for you? Oh, I feel dreadfully sorry about disturbing you again, Mr. Mason, but... Well, good morning, sisters. Oh, good morning, Anthony. Anthony. Morning, boss. You up already? Yes. How are you, Anthony? Oh, say, boss, uh, the book started to pay no attention to the snow early spring coming. Yeah, well, remind me to write a song about it. You were about to ask, sisters. Oh, yes. Uh, do you know where we can find Mr. Rossi? The telephone company says he doesn't have a phone listed. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't know. Oh, well, we look for him in New York. You want to find Mr. Rossi, sister? We just ask any policeman. <laughs> any policeman? Oh, thank you, Anthony. And thank you again, Mr. Mason. We hope you have a pleasant day. Thanks, I shall. A long one. Oh, don't you know who Mr. Rossi is? Of course I know. One of the biggest gamblers and bookmakers in New York. You, I didn't tell him. Sorry, Anthony. That's something they'll have to find out for themselves. You're still out there, Mr. Rossi. <laughs> Come for months. Go away. Don't you know better than to bother me with things like that? Tell left in Dominic to get out and start making a collection. So what about them two months? Well, you gave him the money, didn't you? So they won the money. And where's my hundred bucks? Oh, well, they, they took the money, but they... Uh... They did, huh? I'll show you how to get rid of them. Send them in here. Here they are, Are you Mr. Rossi? Yeah, that's right. Now listen, sisters, I... Well, Sam, what are you standing around for? Get Santa Anita. Santa Anita? Is this what you're Santa Anita, Master? I don't know. Oh, Monsieur Rossi, I'm going to go to the Santa Anita. Oh, I see. What are you talking about? I heard my name. Oh, forgive us, Mr. Rossi, but you mentioned there's Santa Anita, and Sister said she couldn't recall a saint by that name. Well, I'm not interested if there is or isn't. All I know is there's a racetrack. Oh, but there is a Santa Anita, Mr. Rossi. That's Spanish for Saint Anne. Oh, but allow us to introduce ourselves. I'm Sister Margaret, and this is Sister Scholastica. I'm pleased to meet you, but I'm busy, see, and I haven't oh, got... I'm sorry, of course. Then we'll get straight to the point. Mr. Rossi, you own a beautiful piece of property near Bethlehem. What? We've come to you because we... We are most desirous of acquiring that property for a children's hospital. I'm sorry, but it's not for sale. Oh, but it's... If it's not for sale, perhaps you would consider... Look, yeah, say, sisters, this setup I got is too good to last forever, and when things get too hot, I, uh... Well, that is, uh... When I figure it's time to retire, well, I'm going to build me a place out there, you see? Hideout, see? A strictly early American. The old Rossi estate, you know? Oh, well, I see. Well, it's only natural that you should want security. Yeah, that's it, sister, security. Yes. Well, 
Thank you for seeing us. It was most kind of you, and and for your generous contribution. That's okay, sister. It's okay. Good luck to you anyway. Oh, God's been very good to us. Our boat docked only two days ago, and already we've made such good friends. Boat? Yes. Yes, in France. Uh, been how long? Oh, yes. Many years. All through the war? Yes. But during the fighting, I mean, uh, when the G.I.s landed? Yes. And it wasn't over when? Yes, quite so. Look, uh, I know it's a long shot, but uh, I wonder if by any chance you happen to run across that Corporal Walsey, Luigi Walsey Jr., that's my kid, that's what he was. Oh, is that it? No. No, I'm sorry, I wish we could say we had, but there were so many, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so long, sisters. Goodbye, Mr. Rossi. Mr. Rossi. Your son did come back, didn't he? No. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. I don't even know where they buried him. Oh. He was one of them unidentified ones. I see. Now, we'll... You'll say a special prayer for him, Mr. Rossi. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Chief. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This hospital he's going to build, is it, uh, going to have windows? Oh, yes. Yes, we want it as cheerful as possible. Uh, I'm talking about special windows with, uh, colored glass and lighting on them, you know? Oh, well, we hadn't thought about that yet. You well, see, we... put a big one in. See, a great big one with Luigi Rossi Jr. on it. You do that, you can take a line. You can have it all. Is she? Oh, Mr. Rossi. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I may be crazy, but I'm sure. All right, now, suppose you sit down and let me look up my lawyer, huh? So you can get the papers ready. Goodbye, Mr. Rossi. And God love you. Thanks. Say, uh, if you need some dough, I can give you a sure thing and a fifth, but, uh... Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you, you better skip it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, oh, here's the deed, sister. Hold on to it tight. Oh, God is good to us. We have our land. It's a few hours later, and once again, Sister Margaret and Sister Scholastica all to the residence of young Mr. Nation, the songwriter. Come in, won't you, sisters? Oh, thank you. Oh, this is my fiancé, Miss Blaine. How do you do? And my you agent, do? Mr. Sheldon. How do you How do? You do? Yeah. And congratulate me, sisters. I've just accepted a big fat offer from Hollywood. From Hollywood? Well, it's only for 12 weeks, but I'm leaving tonight. Oh, which reminds me, I, uh, I want you to have this. It's a little contribution for the church. Why, thank you, Mr. Nation. Oh, that's most generous of you. No, In your great success, you think of uh, so many Yes, nothing at all. Well, we, we won't intrude on your last evening at home. We only came to thank you for the jeep. Oh, use it any time you want to, as long as you're here. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Mason. Thank you again. And do my eyes, Mr. Thank you. Good night, sister. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night sister. Hey, you know, there's something really very nice about those two. Oh, they're very sweet, darling. And I'm glad I gave them the money. Besides, you can take it off your income tax. No. How about running through that song of yours? What, again? Oh, but it's wonderful, Bob. It's the best song you've ever written. Well, I'm glad you think so. Oh, well. While you were out this morning, Sister Margaret called from Bethlehem. I wish I could change my decision about helping the Monsignor, but I can't. Helping them, Your Excellency? Uh, here is her message. First, they have the land they wanted, and Mr. Rossi gave it to them. Rossi gave it to them? Uh, second, they have already raised $300. Incredible. And lastly, they have bought a building. Bought a building? An act of providence, Sister said. An old plant adjoining the Rossi property. 
formerly used to bottle witch hazel. I know the place, Your Excellency. It's small, but... Uh... Bought a building? But how? With what? Fifty dollars, she said. At least that represents a three-month option. The full price is five thousand dollars. Sister Margaret said it will make an ideal temporary shelter and hospital until the new edifice is built. Monsignor, something tells me that an irresistible force has been let loose in New England. Arrange for a car at once. Of your Excellency, uh, Sir Martin. Thank you, Miss Potts. Now then, sister, on my way here, I went over that building carefully. Well, I must admit it's a bargain, no doubt about it. Five thousand dollars, you say? Yes, Your Excellency. And do you know, only last month they were asking thirty thousand dollars for that old bottling plant. Oh, thirty thousand? Do you have the option paper, sister? Oh, right here, Your Excellency. There. And all in order and signed before a notary. Hmm. Oh, yes. Well, now I understand. Do you realize what this agreement calls for, sister? A trustee. Yes, Your Excellency. It's worth $25,000. Oh, Mr. Jarman, a real estate man was most charitable. And it's good for 10 years, Your Excellency. Sisters, a trustee is not charity. A trust deed is a mortgage. A mortgage? Well, to put it plainly, you have to pay for it. It does not pay you. Pay for it? You see, sisters, the price of the building is not $5,000, but $30,000. $30,000? And since such a sum is out of the question, I shall attempt to recover your $50 from Mr. Jarman and have the option canceled. Oh, no. No, please, Your Excellency. Please, let us try to raise the money. Be practical, Sister Margaret. How can you? Well, I am practical, Your Excellency. We have the land and we have the building. It's well, practically. And we have $300, and, and soon we're going to have more and more because we're, we're planning to buy a bell. A bell? Yes. What can you do with a bell? Well, we shall begin by ringing it, Your Excellency. <laughs> Sisters, do you believe that all you have to do to raise $5,000 in the United States is to ring a bell? Well, you see, it will draw attention to the laces and the, and the jams and the cakes that we to offer for sale. And, and then there's our pottery, Your Excellency. Oh, our pottery was much in demand in France, and sister Kalasica here is an expert oh, on it. Oh, thank you. And I just, sir, your hooked rugs were also very much admired. Oh, thank you, sister. Yes, yes, they were, Your Excellency. But it's impossible for you two to raise anywhere near the amount required by selling these things. Oh, but we shall have the help of the others. Others? Yes. What others? Well, the other sisters who promised to come over and help us. How many, sister? Eleven, you reckon, huh? And, and then, of course, there's Father Barreau, he's our chaplain. Eleven sisters and a priest? Oh, dear, Miss Potts, he won't cause you any trouble. He's happy anywhere. He, he was in a concentration... Don't happy. worry, Miss Potts, they will not come. I shall cable at once and put a stop to this... this migration. And you, sisters, must prepare to leave. Yes, Your I'm sorry. This is my final word on the subject. About, uh, about the cable, Your Excellency? Yes? I, I'm afraid it may be too late. Yes. Listen. They've come. They're here already. Oh, look at the night there. A whole busload. Oh. <laughs> Sister Margaret. Oh. Sister Scholastica. Father Barrow. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Well, you see, we have arrived. We have arrived. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear, dear. Oh, and God will bless you for giving them shelter. Yes, but where would he let me pay? Sister Margaret? Well, oh, I'm sorry, Your Excellency, but they arrived sooner than I had expected. You see, they were just so eager to help with the house. Very well, Sister. It. They are here. But I want you to understand that you may remain only for the period of your option, three months. Yes. If by then you have failed to raise the necessary money or are unable to sustain yourself, 
You will all have to leave. Is that clear? Yes, Your Excellency. And thank you. God bless you. This is the last, okay? And you, Miss Potts. Yes. An irresistible force, Miss Potts. I'll swap your vaccination. Against which, quite obviously, there is no defense. There hasn't been for nearly 2,000 years. Stopped off in New York, Anthony. These friends of mine are going to stay with us for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, this is it, everybody. My little gray home in New England. Bob, how lovely. No wonder you never want to go to New York. What a layout. Well, Kitty, the old place still looks good, doesn't it? It's wonderful, darling. What's that down the line? Oh, that's just a duck, Miss Kitty. Just a little old duck. I'd better get the bags inside. Just a minute, Anthony. Who's that nun? The one chasing the duck. Got me, boss. Oh, no, it's looking like to me. I better get some ice and leave you off some nice, clean drink. And look down that road. Three of them riding bicycles. They're away with me, boy. Come on, sisters. Just a minute, Anthony. What's going on around here? Who are all those nuns? Oh, there's just a little handful of them, boy. Just the at the stable. How many of them? No, didn't count them, boy. I better get you folks set. And don't disappear, Anthony. I want to talk to you. Poor old dog. What are you tying up for? It's all right, Arson. It's all right, old boy. Now, what's the idea, Anthony, tying up Arson? Oh, the wrong time, boy. The wrong time. Get your hands off of him. Now, what's he tied up for? Well, uh, his ribs are all thin, and he's running the legs off. Oh, well, why shouldn't he run? No, boss, no. In here, everybody, if you want a drink. Anthony's the best bartender this side of... What's the matter with that dog? You must have seen the squirrel, boss. And what's that racket? That bell. You mean that little bit of ringing sound, boss? I mean that infernal din. What is it? Oh, that's the bell belonging to the sisters. Excuse me, boss. Bell? What are the sisters doing with a bell? Ringing the customers, boss. Customers? For what? For the, the little things they sell down there. Down where? At Miss Potts? That's right, boss. Bob, look at that crowd over there. Automobiles. I'm beautiful. terribly sorry, everybody. Excuse me, will you? I've got to go see what this is all about. Well, Robert, how very nice to see you back. Hello, Amelia. I hate to interrupt your painting, but... Oh, nonsense. Now, look here, Amelia. What's the idea of taking those nuns in behind my back? Behind your back? But you weren't even here. Exactly. You moved those nuns in while I was away. The place was flooded with them. I moved them. With their chickens, their geese, their goats, their ducks, and heaven knows what else. You've got to get rid of them, Amelia. The whole flock of them. Well, Robert, I'm surprised at you. They're going to build a hospital for sick children. They've worked and played and saved every penny. Now, see here, Amelia. You've got to get rid of them, or you'll have to leave yourself. What's the matter of fact? No one's going to move them. They're going to move themselves tomorrow. I don't care what you... Well, 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 then why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, that's different. Where are they moving to? There. 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 There? There? You mean the old bottling plant? Yes, where they used to make big cages. But that's right across Smith the road from my place. They can't put a hospital there. I won't stand for it. Oh, you won't, won't you? No, I won't. Well, if they paid Mr. Darman $4,950, they'd own their property, and there's nothing you can do about it. No, well, just you wait and see. Well, I intend to. <laughs> We are using your kitchen table for our accounting desk. We are figuring up our tax receipts. Uh, did Mr. Mason find you, Miss Hart? He was looking for you. Oh, he found me, all right. Oh, I'm so glad he's there. We must tell him our good news. Good news? Yes, indeed. Look at this. Now, look. The jams, patties, laces, embroideries, eggs, milk, and cheeses, and other items have brought us just over $2,000. Is that correct, Father Bill? 
And then there's a hook rug of your design and execution, thank you, which was so generously purchased by Mrs. Spooner for $2,200. And now that brings our total up so far, including contributions, to, now let me see, $4,504.05. But that isn't enough, is it? Oh, but we only have $500 more, and that should be easy to raise. By noon tomorrow? Oh, no, of course not, Miss... Tomorrow? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no, that can't be. You, you must be mistaken, Miss Potts. It was exactly three months ago tomorrow. I remember the day so well. But it can't be. Oh, we... The time has just flown by. We've been working so hard and... Oh, now $500 to raise in one day... Might as well be a million. Perhaps Mr. Rossi? No. no. No, sister, we mustn't ask him again. And anyway, you remember he sent us a postcard. He's, he's resting in that little place in California. Uh, what's his name again? Bay Meadows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sister, I just can't believe that we've seen We must have left something undone. But perhaps we haven't worked hard enough for... Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it was because we neglected to dig the foundations for the small shrine on the hill. Of course, sister, that's it. And that was my fault, because I don't like to dig. If I only had the money, I'd... Oh, oh we know you would, Miss Potts. We know you would. No, sister. Tomorrow morning at dawn, we'll start building our shrine. Yes. And then we'll call Mr. Jarman and ask him for a week's extension. Oh, it's so little time he's sure to agree. Oh, don't you think? I'm sure he will. I think he will. Well, uh, Father, shall we finish? Hello, Mr. Jarman? Yes. Oh, hello, Mr. Jarman. This is Mason, Robert Mason. Oh, hello, Mr. Mason. I heard you were back. Uh, uh, say, about that old building across from me, Mr. Jarman, I uh, understand those nuns have an option on it. Oh, yes, yes, they do. It expires at noon tomorrow, and I have an idea they're not going to be able to pick it up. Well, you don't say. Well, uh, what if they ask for an extension? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Mason, but I'll have to refuse them. Oh, don't be sorry. Now, you're sure you won't give them any more time? Oh, I think they have a very worthy cause, but after all, business is business. Uh, there's someone else who wants that property. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Thanks a lot, Mr. Jarman. Well, the day is now here when the option expires. When Sister Margaret and her fellow nuns are most certainly due to lose the little building they've tried so desperately to buy. In the Mason home, Bob and his weekend guests are gathered around the piano. Hey, you got a real tune there, Bob. Congratulations. Thanks. Merely the best tune you'll ever written. Did you hear that, Bob? And that's from a music critic, too. Wait a minute. Am I hearing things? Listen. What's the matter? The man's there singing. Yes, I know they're singing. Wait a minute. I want to hear it. Here on 
the crest of the hill is where our shrine should be. Unless you think otherwise. Oh, no, Sister Margaret. What more lovely place could there be? Good. Then you'll mark the place with this iron spike. There. Now drive it in, sister, and drive it deep. Is it going down? Oh, yes. Yes, you're doing very well, sister. Half a dozen more blades, and I think we'll sit. Just a look. Water. Water coming forth from the ground. A fountain. No. No, a geyser. Oh. No, but it's God. The others. Look at the others. Saga Baru. Miss Pat. Sister. Sister, come. <laughs> Anthony! Anthony! You calling me, Bob? Where have you been? But, Bob, I thought you said you were going to take a shower. I said, where have you been? Been watching a miracle, Bob. If you've never seen one before, you better go right down and see one now. What are you talking about? Up down the hill. Bob, there was a stream of water shooting 20 feet in the air, and it came to the sisters just as they were digging a hole to put up a sign. Digging up? No wonder I couldn't take a shower. They just took my water pipe. <laughs> water pipe? Yes. That's right, my water pipe, and that settles it. Get the chief, Anthony. I'm going into Bethlehem. So I came to see you, Mr. Jarman, just to make sure about the sale of the old bottling plant. But, Mr. Mason, I told you the sister's option expires at noon today. Yes, I know you did. You also said something about selling it to somebody else. Are you sure you've got a customer for it? You bet I have. Real reliable fellow, too. I'm going to put up a fertilizer plant. Fertilizer. <laughs> what did you say? Fertilizer plant. He tried to build it in town, but the council wouldn't let him. Fumes, you know. What about me? I live right across from the place. Look, how much did this fertilizer fellow offer you? $31,000. And if I offer you $32,000? I think we could make a deal, Mr. Mason, uh, providing, of course, the sisters don't raise $500 in the next two hours. All right, then. Come over this afternoon with the papers, and I'll give you a check. Uh, yes, we came to apologize to Miss Blair for breaking this water pipe. It was more than careless of us. Well, don't worry about it. The plumber's fixing it now. And Mr. Mason? He'll be back soon. He had to run into town about something. Uh, you were all about to play tennis. Please don't let us interrupt you. Oh, we've been playing, sister, but oh. Miss Lane and I know when to quit. These two just beat us to a pulp. You know, I'd give a small fortune to beat you two just once. Oh, well, ready any time you are out. Uh, excuse me, but do you really mean that? Mean what? Uh, would you really give a small fortune, perhaps as a donation to a good cause, for the opportunity to defeat the lady and the gentleman? Well, uh, well, yes, maybe not a small fortune, but... Uh... Oh, would you consider $500 less than a small fortune? Well... Uh... Yes, I suppose so. It's oh. a little worth 500. Why? Uh, will you excuse me, please, while I talk to Sister? What are they up to, anyway? I don't get all this money we're spring about. But it's been so long. I know, I know, but it's a solution. Okay. May I see your racket, please, Miss Blaine? My racket? Uh, sure. And your shoes? Oh, good, good. They will fit. May I borrow them? Well, well, yes, but what for? What? Well, it is agreeable to everyone. Sister Scholastica would like to be this gentleman's partner in a tennis match. You? My partner? Yes. Please. And if you and Sister win, you will donate $500, huh? Sure, uh, ma'am. Well, uh, well, uh, what do you say? Two sets out of three? Okay, Phyllis. Okay, by me. You, uh, you've played tennis before, Sister. Oh, yes. But not for a very long time, I'm afraid. Now, don't try to run out on it, Al. Come on. Well, what's going on here, Kitty? Isn't she marvelous, Bob? That's just a scholastic out there. Hello, Mr. Mason. We came to tell you how sorry you were about the water pipe. Well, forget it. It's all fixed. Oh, thank you. Your guest very kindly offered to donate $500 if we and Sister Scholastica should win the tennis match. You, you mean you're going to get $500 from him if they... Wow. 
Be quiet, darling. This is last point. Oh, too bad, too bad. James, that's Aunt Matt. Oh, and what a match. Oh, Cynthia, you're marvelous. Oh, but we love. I am sorry, Monsieur. Sorry? Why, I've never enjoyed a game so much in my life. Where did you learn to play like that, sister? Oh, yes, you were wonderful. Oh, no, mademoiselle. I was not wonderful. You remember, perhaps, Jocelyn Allard of the 1939 French team? Do I? You know, Jocelyn Allard? No, mademoiselle. No longer. I lost, Sister Margaret. I lost. You tried, sister. That's the important thing. Mr. Mason, uh, I know this isn't the right moment, and you've been so good to us already, but you were wondering... I know all about it, sister, and the answer is no. I'm sorry, but I just don't want a hospital, temporary or permanent, in my backyard. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, sister, but that's the way I feel. Yes, of course. Well, thank you anyway, Mr. Mason. Come, sister. We'd better go back now. And so we must go back to France, Miss Potts. But we want you to know that you have our everlasting prayers and gratitude. But, sister Margaret, you... You failed. Oh, no, no, we haven't failed. That is not in God's plan we haven't. Even though we don't understand it right now. If only there was something I could do. For the first time in my life, I know how it feels to be poor. Poor? Oh, my dear Miss Potts. You're not poor. You're a rich woman. <laughs> So rich and kind and in the greatness of heart and in faith. Oh, come now, you mustn't cry for us. You know, it isn't hard to relinquish a dream if it's God's will. Come now, while I tell you. And since you all seem so curious as to why I went into town, all right, I'll tell you why. I'm... I'm buying that old plant across the way. Oh, no. What are you going to do with it, Bob? Make witch hazel? You don't approve, do you? None of you approve. Well, you may as well hear all of it. Those nuns didn't have the money to meet the option, so I moved in. Just in time, too. Bob, I, I don't understand. Progress, kid. Progress. Don't you recognize the merits of a bottling plant over a children's hospital? If I were you, Al, I'd keep quiet. I seem to recall the city wanting to build a playground in your neighborhood, and the moment you heard about it, you got people to sign a petition against it. Well, uh, maybe I did, but that was just... Sure, that was different because it happened to you. Look... Supposing you've worked all your life, hoping someday to be able to build a place in the country where you could work and live the way you wanted to. Finally, you, you get the break. You build your house. You think a lot of dough into it. And along comes somebody and wants to build a hospital right in your front yard. Would you stand for it? Would any of you stand for it? I know how you feel, Bob, but those sisters are doing a very worthy thing. Yes, I know, and I'm all for it. I'm for a lot of worthy things. Orphan asylums, insane asylums, sanitariums, but I'm just like everybody else. I don't want them right under my nose, and I'm honest enough to say so. Give them all a drink, Kit. I'm going out to cool off. Mr. Mason, you come to say goodbye to us. No, I... I was just out for a walk. I... Oh. I didn't mean to break in on you. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Well, uh... Isn't there something I can do? Something... Something you need? There's a station wagon with a jeep. Oh, thank you. But there's nothing you need. Oh, but you have things to walk. Sister Scholastic and I were coming over to your house to do this. What's that? Well, it's the money you gave us. We won't be needing it now, and it's only right that you should have it back. But I, I don't want it back. Can't, can't you use it for something? Uh, to help you pay your expenses home. Oh, that's very kind of you, too, but that's all been taken care of by our mother house in Villers. Vi Villers? Yes. In, in France? Normandy? Yes. Do you know it? Yes, I, 
I know it. Oh, how nice. Sister, I... I'd like to do something. I... Isn't there... Isn't there anything? Yes, Mr. Mason, there is. Could you say a prayer for me? Well, I'm... I'm afraid prayers aren't very much in my line. I'm not... I'm not very good at that sort of thing, but... But if it'll please you... Oh, it will. And it'll please God. Why, this paper is the deed to the building, and a bill of sale marked paid in full. He came here last night, Your Excellency, Mr. Mason. He said a prayer for us. He, he must have come back later, much later. We found the deed when we came to Mass early this morning. Oh, please, Your Excellency, may we stay and work for our hospital. I think you will stay here all your days, Sister Margaret. And now, I too should like to pray for you. In a minute, our stars will return. Now here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And here they are, coming forward for an extra curtain call. Loretta Young and Hugh Marlowe. <laughs> Loretta, there's always a special excitement when you're in the Lux Radio Theater. Just think, this is your 26th appearance. Yes. Well, it's always exciting for me, too, Bill. And tonight was a, well, a favorite role of mine. And one for which you received an Academy Award nomination last year. You know, last week was pretty exciting in Hollywood, too. March 20th brought a new batch of Academy Award winners and their Oscars. And March 21st brought spring, sulfur, and molasses. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. With Lux Toilet Soap for Beauty Care, all you need are those daily Lux Soap facials for a radiant complexion. Well, you ought to know, Loretta. You're one of our best recommendations for beauty. You, I think you must be out of touch with what's going on in Hollywood. Well, I suppose I am a little bit. I spent several months making a picture in South America. But since then, I, returning, I've had time to finish one called Wait Till the Sun Shines Nelly. Oh, that sounds like one of those wonderful 20th Century Fox musicals in Technicolor. Huh? It is. Ah. And incidentally, Loretta, don't miss the latest release called Five Fingers. Five Fingers? That sounds like the life of a one-armed bandit. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Loretta. Those are the five fingers of a spy played by James Mason, who uses them to steal war secrets from the British. Oh, yes, Bill, I remember reading it. And it was all the more exciting because it actually happened. Right. And uh, what story do you have for next week, Bill? Well, one that can actually happen every day, you, because it's a romantic drama set to the background of New York's fabulous models and designers and as timely as today's fashion headlines. It's I Can Get It For You Wholesale. And we will have the original stars of this fascinating 20th Century Fox picture, Susan Hayward and Dan Daly. Oh, I shall love listening to that, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks for two beautiful performances. And now, here's John Kennedy with news about another star performance. <laughs> Beaver Brothers Company unconditionally guarantees the quality and performance of Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flake, Rather than toothpaste, as presented on this program, or your money refunded. Now we invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Susan Hayward and Dan Daly in I Can Get It For You Wholesale. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Class tonight were Gladys Holland as Sister Scholastica, Ruth Parrott as Miss Potts, Bill Johnstone as the Bishop, Louis Jean Hyde as Al, and Scatman Crothers as Anthony. Our play was adapted by S. H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear I Can Get It For You Wholesale, starring.